10% water change two or three times a year. Lighting 24-7 for the first two weeks. 50 to 75% of the tank in plants. The dirt is comprised of four items. And the supplement is 15 different minerals. So what you're creating is a natural environment possible for it to sustain itself virtually indefinitely. Come right on in. You're it, Father Fish. The dirt is comprised of four items. Number one, it's 50% some kind of humic material. Now, I use peat moss because peat moss is still available in the U.S. It's not in Europe and it's not in Canada. You can use choir, C-O-I-R. That's coconut fiber. You can use ground up leaves, not green leaves, the leaves that fall from the trees this time of the year. It's very important if you're going to use leaves not to pick them off the tree and dry them because they will contain all of the sugars. So any kind of humic material, that's 50% of the soil layer. 25% is some kind of compost, any kind of compost at all. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be pond muck. It can be black cow. It can be compost from your compost, any kind of composted material. So it's organic that's broken down. The third item is soil. All of this happens in soil. The third item is 25%. So we've got 50% humus, 25% soil, 25% organics, and then 10% father fish supplement. And the supplement is about 15 different minerals, any one of which could not exist in the mix you have, any one of which could be quickly depleted. What this does is bring those minerals into the material such that they will be there as needed. The reason for this is really very simple. You can't go back in and add them. You can put fertilizer in the water, but that's in the water. And fertilizer is a problem anyway because it screws with the hormonal activity that the plant is engaged in. Another element that we put in that substrate is buffers. And we've got a number of different buffers. Lime is one, bone meal is another, sodium bicarbonate is another, a fourth one is diatomaceous third, all of which prevent the substrate from becoming acidic. It becomes acidic, it becomes deadly. All of these elements will, as they become part of the plant life, part of the life of the other microorganisms in that soil, will be converted as those elements die and be returned to the soil in the life cycle. So it all cycles. It cycles as an environment. So what you're creating is a natural environment that cycles all of the elements of that environment in a way that makes it possible for it to sustain itself virtually indefinitely. Now, once the soil is put together, put water in it, create a mud, let it sit for a day. Of that material, you want no more than one inch in a tank less than 55 gallons. If it's bigger than 55 gallons, you can add another half inch up to 100 gallons at 100 gallons plus. You can go to two inches. In my 200 gallon tank, I never went beyond two inches. It's very important to have double the amount of sand as there is soil. So in less than a 55 gallon tank, one inch of the soil mixture, two inches of sand. And the reason for this is the soil is going to rise up in the sand, but it'll only come up as deep as it is. In other words, it'll come up about one inch into the sand. So if you've got two inches, it's not going to escape 
into the water column. It'll still be in the sand bed. And as it does rise up, the plant roots will be able to use that as nutrients. In the beginning, when you first set this tank up, the organics are extremely active. You got a lot of bubbling, a lot of gas, a lot of chelation going on. Put a dish or a bowl or plastic bag over it, put the water in when it's full to within and then two to the top, take it out. Immediately plant plants. You want 50 to 75% of the tank in plants. Not one or two plants, 10 or 20 or 30 or 40. You want a lot of plants. You need it heavily planted from the beginning. The best kind of plants to put in there are stem plants, Valisneria, chain swords, those kinds of things that are fast growing plants, Anacharis, which is a stem plant. Things are going to grow quickly, take hold, and begin cycling immediately. Plants remove ammonia directly. If you have plants in there, you may test for ammonia, but you don't need to worry about it because the plants are controlling. If the roots of the plants are planted down into the dirt, they will burn. It will kill the plant. So you never plant below one inch. Let the root find the nutrition. Don't introduce it directly. Roots are really good at finding nutrition. So you don't need to push them all the way down in there. If you do in a brand new tank, the plant's gonna die. There's a process called chelation that occurs. Chelation is simply what happens when uh, minerals or compounds are put together that are active. They are active with each other or react with each other. The less reactive they are and the more stable they become. Eventually they become chelated. They become no longer active with each other. That's what happens in that deep substrate. We got elements in there, chemicals in there that are in process of chelation. That takes a few months to complete. It can take as long as five months. Usually it's two to three months. So you're going to have gas bubbles coming off. The gas is CO2 and nitrogen. Nothing that's dangerous, nothing that's going to create a problem at all. You got buffers in there that are preventing it from becoming aesthetic. It's not going to be toxic. The next day, day two, put a few fish in the tank. The tank will already be in process of balancing ammonia to nitrates. The nitrogen cycle will already be in place. It'll already be occurring. The plants will be absorbing ammonia as it's created. Now clearly you don't want to feed heavily in the first week or two. When I put a few fish in there, I do not put food in there. I don't put food in for the first week. None of any kind. They will be picking away on the plant or whatever's on the bottom. The fish will find food. And if you don't believe me, watch them pooping in that week you're not feeding. They will be pooping. And the only way they can poop is if they're eating. So then begin feeding every week at a few more fish. I do lighting 24-7 for the first at least two weeks, if not a month, in order to give the plants a real head start and in order to make sure that all the organics in there are able to do whatever photosynthesis they need to do and gain the benefit of the light cycle that first couple of weeks. After that, you can back up on it. If you start getting algae, put more plants in. If you get algae, it means you don't have enough plants because plants take nutrients out of the water before algae does. I find that it makes me feel better if I do a 10% water change in my tank two or three times a year, whether I really need to do that or not, I'm not at all certain, but I do it because it gives me a comfort level. And that's how you set the tank up.